Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we are going to talk a little bit about Mapbox's prefabs that they have set up for us in their SDK and get our location-based game set up with an actual map and actual data. So if you come and visit the Mapbox SDK folder in our project directory, you'll notice there are a few different folders like the AR core, Mapbox AR, resources, third-party assets, etc. But we're going to want this Mapbox directory. And then if we come down into the prefabs, you'll notice there's attribution, city simulator map, location-based game, which take a wild guess at what we're going to use, location provider, map, and a player prefab. And these are all prefabs that Mapbox provides to us for really, really easy integration of their system. So we're going to grab this location-based game, and we're going to go through the super complicated process of adding it to our... We're just going to click and drag it, and then we're going to update this position so that we are at... Oh, come on. Zero, zero, zero. And that's it. We are going to want to adjust our camera a bit, but that's that's really all there is to it. It may not look like much, but if we go ahead and press the play button, you'll notice that a map has now been dynamically generated for us. It's based in the default location. And one of the super cool things here is if I take my camera and I move it, you'll also notice that our scene is dynamically generated off of what we need, what's in view which is a really handy feature and super complicated. But that does also provide us with built-in optimizations for mobile rendering because we, we don't really want more of the map than we need. So congratulations, you are already up and running with Mapbox. So let's take a look and see what is going on under the hood. Let's stop running that. And then we're going to open up this location-based game and take a look at its components. So the first one that we've got is this map. This is the map that was rendering on the ground. And you'll notice that there's an abstract map script with a whole bunch of different options. And I'll minimize those real quick and we'll go through each one. And then there's also the option to initialize the map with a location provider, which is super important. The location provider is what allows Mapbox to tell where we are in the world. So first, let's take a look at the general settings. So we've got our location, which is a latitude and longitude. And a super cool feature here is we can actually search for locations. Say we were looking for the town I grew up in, Valdez AK. And this 61, negative 146, that is actually it. It provides a list of latitudes and longitudes that match that search, which I think is a great feature. We've also got a default zoom, which is obviously how much the map is zoomed in. And then we've got the extent options. And this is a really nice feature as well. So right now, by default, it's set to camera bounds, which is why the map would disappear when the camera no longer had it in view. However, we can do a range around the center and a range around a transform or even custom settings to change how much of the map is rendering at runtime. Say you weren't even using a location-based game and you wanted to make this big, beautiful console or PC game and render a huge map to begin with. Well, you can totally do that. They make that easy for you. And you can update what camera is being used and the interval and whether or not it initializes on start. And then you've got some other settings like whether or not the map is placed at the location center or at the tile center. You can snap it to zero. It's got scaling options as well. And you can even set a custom loading texture while it's rendering, which I think is super cool. Say, for example, I was making a sci-fi game and I wanted some awesome texture with, say, bright blue-green fluorescent hexagons going on while the map is loading. I could totally switch out this texture, and it'll display that while the map's rendering here in the scene. So next we've got the image, and this is where we're actually going to pull in that Mapbox Studio style that we created before. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to change the data source, and you'll notice they've got a whole bunch of different options in here, but we're going to go ahead and say Custom. And then in this map ID slash style URL, we're going to pop open Mapbox Studio, go to our Pocket Droids Go Styles menu, and we are going to go and grab this style URL right here, copied. We're going to come back into Unity, and then we are just going to paste this into this style URL spot. And they have different options like use Retina or use Compression or use Mipmap but we're just going to leave those disabled for now. And just to kind of show you what we just did, let's go ahead and press play. And you'll notice that now our map looks a heck of a lot more like what we were creating in Mapbox Studio. Let's grab the camera, and I'm going to back up. 
And that's what I was talking about earlier with the loading texture. You'll notice that it's just a plain black with white squares around the tiles. That's what's replaced if we change that setting. But our map looks pretty darn good. So we're going to go ahead and stop running that, come back here into the map. And then our next option is terrain. And this is where we handle things like elevations. So say mountains or cities with different elevations, hills, valleys, anything like that. That's where this comes into play. By default, it's set to flat terrain. But there are other options like terrain with elevation, low poly terrain or globe terrain. And you can also adjust the data source to set up custom terrain handling as well. I really like that Mapbox has gone so much out of their way to make it fully customizable for us so that we can pull in whatever we want and change things up. But since we're not spending too much time on the terrain for this game, I'm not gonna spend too much time here on it. Just know that you can add colliders and there's an exaggeration factor and there are other settings as well to customize your terrain. Let's minimize that. And then in the vector section, this is where we handle things like buildings, for example. And we're actually gonna change this data source. Since we aren't using building IDs with our maps, we are just gonna change it to Mapbox Streets. And then we're gonna customize this vector by building a vector layer visualizer to add a really cool effect to our game. So we're gonna click this add visualizer. And you'll notice that there are now a whole bunch of settings for it. And I'm gonna click on it once to rename it. And I'm just gonna name this buildings because that's pretty much what we're going for here. And all of these default settings are just fine, except we are gonna update this extrusion type. And what this is gonna allow us to do is to make our buildings pop. Now for some games, you might want the property height, which is going to give us realistic heights based on for how tall buildings actually are, which I think is a really great and intense feature. But for the type of game that we are wanting to do, let's just go ahead and say absolute height. And we're gonna to wanna to extrude the roof and the side. And I'm just gonna give it a height of, let's start with 10 and see how that looks. So let's go ahead and press play. And you'll notice I have bright blinding purple buildings everywhere. These are all extruded as you can kind of tell, which is really cool. But the reason they're purple is because we haven't added a material. So let's go ahead and stop running because I've noticed sometimes the visualizer doesn't like to update at runtime when we are changing materials and such but that's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and grab one of their styles. So let's go with the Explorer Gray for the roof material and Explorer Gray for the siding material as well. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and press play and see how that looks. Perfect. We've now got all of these cool buildings everywhere. Let's grab the camera and we can actually see buildings getting populated on the ground in real time. How cool is that? and all we had to do was adjust some settings. I've tried doing this before on my own, and let me tell you, it's a huge pain. So it's great that they have this option. I'm in love with it. And with these visualizers, we can actually change what we are working with just by changing the layer name. So we can do this with a whole bunch of different types of structures, which again is super cool. So let's take a look at our player. There's not much to it. You've got your immediate position and rotate with location provider scripts, which we'll go into more later. And that's that's really it. That's all it takes to get started. So congratulations, you now have a running map with location providers via Mapbox, and it only took a couple of minutes. And that includes custom map styles, extruded buildings, the whole nine yards. So this is great. Great job following along. I'm excited for this game. So let's jump on in and keep going with this. This is Ben with devslopes.com and we'll see you next time.